Hey, hey, we're the broadcast. <laughs> People say we podcast around, but we're too busy drinking and hoping <laughs> that Andy gets down. Yes, so good. <laughs> Broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is season seven, episode 12. So therefore, this episode is dedicated to Amanda. Uh, I know. I keep looking at the, the episode. Yes. It's a fun number. It's a I fun like number. <laughs> number 282. Yeah, How's not being the numbers person of the group. This was one I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Uh, how's it going, everybody? It goes. Tired. <laughs> Woo. Gabby's saying hi. Yes, oh. Gabby's all up in my business. Oh, uh, Gabby may or may not have met her first copperhead, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> that's right. But she lived to tell the tale. So she sure did, yeah. It was the other day, it was like dusk, and so I was like, okay, Gabby, that's copperhead come time. In? Yeah. So I was, you know, like, trying to call her in and then I saw she was just in the in the front yard kind of like between our yard and our neighbor's yard and she was just like very intently looking at something very curious and I was like oh what you looking at girl so I went into the yard and I kind of like looked down to see because I thought you know usually cats are very interested in different animals and stuff so I was like oh what could this be and then when my <laughs> eyes adjusted enough to see what it was I was like no no <laughs> No. Everyone back away very slowly and then very quickly. Yes. So I kind of pushed her aside and then I whipped out my phone to take a picture. But then as I was doing that, she like started coming back and I was like, no. So I just abandoned ship and didn't get a picture, but just grabbed her and went inside. Well, and I was just like, Hoo. and then Googled pictures of copperheads and I was like, yeah, that kind of, that looks pretty. I mean, you know, I could be wrong because I, it was dusk. And I so didn't it was get just that like, picture, but no, dusk is like copperhead up, like just yeah, it was just like coiled up in a little pile, just like sitting there, like her, you know, watching watching her as she was watching it, and yeah, it was she didn't get any closer than that, but uh, so that so copperheads are pit vipers, which means they'll like wait there to strike, and oh, and so I was with some. <gasps> I need. I haven't been with grown ups in a long time. I've had a lot of single mom timing over the last several months, um, just because Jay's been super busy with like uh, Geek Dad Life and Padre Game stuff and whatever. Um, so I went and did this whole day of geocaching, thirteen hours of geocaching in Rocky Mount <laughs> with my friends. We went in tunnels. We went. We did went around town. They went to this college campus at a bunch. It was super super fun. But I was with them when I got your text, Shandy, oh. and then one of them shared a story about how he ended up having to uh, kill a copperhead because it was in his backyard, like, where his dog was, and the dog had seen it, so I take he has a little dog, too, that's probably, like, just a little bit bigger oh. than Gabby. <laughs> yeah. um, and he gave it the chance to, like, go away, but because they're pit vipers and their instinct is to, like, wait to strike... Yeah. He was like, all right, it, I gave it the chance. And I was so yeah. now, and it just stayed coiled there. So now that you say that, it stayed coiled there just watching. And if it was oh. like that brown with the diamonds, <sighs> then <sighs> that's it's okay, though. You know what? You need to get a good black snake that lives there that will eat the copperheads and keep it keep them away. And not hurt us or Gabby? Yeah, they. I think they, they move fast. Because oh, we, we have a black this snake. Is I, this is why I'm never moving to North Carolina. Guys, I cannot do it. There are too I, many you get snakes. used to it. I refuse. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. I was texting with my sister and telling her the story because she's also in North Carolina. I was going to go see her this Saturday, but I probably won't because there might be a hurricane. Which is just like, oh. <laughs> but um, she was like, yeah, we, we've had that too. Yeah. Um, and I was telling her, I was like, I would honestly, like, I would prefer bears, mountain lions, <laughs> like, basically anything. Like, yeah, anything yeah. than venomous snakes. It's yeah. the fucking worst. I and now I think, I think back to, like, the first couple of weeks in this house, a couple of times, like, when, like, at dusk, uh, when, a couple of times when I had taken the garbage out and it's, like, on the side of my house and... 
especially like early on when we hadn't bought a mower yet and hadn't like cut the grass and I felt kind of like weird about it and I like got my phone because I was like looking yeah. at the grass and then afterwards I was like I was like you're being over paranoid and I'm like no I was not being over paranoid it 100% could have happened I will never take the garbage out again after dark like not yeah happening. so yeah. before oh. yeah before they tore down all the so Jack and Cindy used to live in this, so they lived in a cul-de-sac, and they lived in this beautiful pine forest, like, right next to them. It was really, really, really nice. And they have since torn it down and put the road goes all the way through now and built out townhouse, townhomes yeah. there. It really sucks, like, because it used to be, their, like, yeah. backyard, it was just beautiful, and now it's gone. <laughs> but but yeah. when they did have the nature next to them, um, Jack would always find uh, copperheads hidden behind the garbage cans. Fuck. Oh, God, no. Mm-mm. Fuck that yep, shit. Nope. Never taking the trash out um, ever again. Nope. So if you want, he used to get, he gave us tips when we first moved here because he did all natural stuff. Like you'll read online like mothballs and all that. Don't do that. It just poisons the ground. Like you don't, you don't want to do anything like that. Jack did a lot of research and, and, um, Found something online that worked really well for him. It was like one of the vinegar contraption things. Like, you know, I- I'll ask him. I'll I'll tell him to message you or whatever. But like, okay. he found something that he had he had used that worked. Um, but they also found one that had climbed up on the garage one day. So when they opened up the no, garage no, door, it fell no, down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jack has some copperhead stories. Oh my God. <laughs> this is why I can't. I'm not oh coming, guys. Do this. <laughs> Keep talking and I'll never come visit. I cannot with snakes swinging from the rafters. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. <laughs> when I am yeah, um, no. at my Thank old job, I know I've told this story at my old job um, when we were in Cary. They developed, like MetLife built these two buildings where they tore through the woods and like, you know, completely destroyed the wildlife habitats that were next to us. And one day, um, well, one day there were baby copperheads in the stairwell, but I didn't see them. I wasn't there. Uh, The woman who was the receptionist at the time, she came in that way and uh, first in the morning and discovered them. But my coworker, she was leaving one day and walked out the back. And here's a thud behind her. And she's terrified of snakes. And it was a black snake had climbed, crawled up the wall of the building and fell down after she had, like, slammed the door to leave to go to her car. She freaked out. Oh, my God. My legs are literally curled up in my chair because I'm now afraid of snakes, like, being I, on the floor. I had that same thought. And, like, yeah. so you, I, Amanda, I'm, I'm there's just, no – you don't have to worry about snakes by you. I know. I know this. But it, irrational fear, like it yeah. is an irrational fear of snakes. No, I, I am getting urges to look at my feet. And the thing is, like, I'm used to leaving the doors open, like, all the time. Yeah. And so that's been a big adjustment. When we first got here, it was like, well, logically, it's, like, way too fucking hot and yeah. get it outside, so you can't leave the doors open. And then it's like, okay, there's also, like, mosquitoes, whatever. But lately, as the temperatures have been coming down, like, sometimes I will leave the doors open. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I can never leave the doors open. Because a fucking snake could come in here. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you know you what you want. should do to, for that? Just make sure, like, you have – your food is, like, sealed. So, like, if you have cereal, you know, make sure it's closed or, like, you have the little plastic things you put them in to, like, just – because that kind of stuff, you know, animals smell, including snakes. So Okay. Now my, now my skin is crawling. Okay. Yeah. We can move on. We, we can move on. I did – I also saw the other day I saw a dead cockroach in my hall. And yeah, I was well, just yeah. Like, See, now, well, now that's we're just, talking yeah, about that's, stuff I understand. That's it's city life. No bugs should be that big. Um, yeah. Cockroach, I feel like cockroach is something I've heard about my whole life, but never actually saw one until I came over here. I mean, I'm, you can you get, get the spray. Jay, Jay sprays. You just have to redo it after it rains. It lasts until it rains. But then if you just redo it and, you know, that keeps, the, that keeps the cockroaches and the spiders out. Yeah, we use like a gel. Good like God. Gel. Yeah. It's like all natural, so it's like you know with the cat and the baby. Like, yeah, mm, like gel. But you got to change it up because at least New York City roaches—they're like they're determined buggers. A cockroach. A cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> so like what you you can't use the same thing for too long. Like you got to change it up because they wow. build up immunity really fast. Wow. So like it's That's not wild. it's not a silver bullet thing. Yeah. It's like a right. You're in a you're in like a it's a cold war with those those things. It's, it's well, yeah. I was kind of like. 
like I was like, where did you come from? And how have you been here somehow long enough to be dead? Like what? But apparently like the really big ones, like there's usually only one of those. Like Colleen, do you remember the big roach in our apartment? Vaguely. I remember the big roach in my apartment here that I had to buy a fly swatter because both Zoe and I couldn't reach it. And Zoe was trying real hard. <laughs> this, was, this was a similar thing. We were sitting on the couch. And yes, so big, yes, we yes, yes, yes. across the room moving. And we're like, what is that? I remember oh this. We put on galoshes. Weren't we watching Gossip Girl or something? Probably. Yeah. I mean, that era, era appropriate. <laughs> it sounds like that episode of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> yeah it was probably it, it, was like, it was like a how i met your mother like broad city like all wrapped into one real life experience <laughs> we put on galoshes i think you had like a rolled up newspaper yeah that like that wasn't working so i think it we ultimately were using like a broom and like it was big it's like baseball it wasn't baseball size i now i'm just being hyperbolic but like it was it was big like literally we saw it from like across the room like a good 11 feet away <laughs> Oh, my God. Guys, happy October, as this is posting. And instead of heffalumps and woozles, we have cockroaches and snakes. Yeah. (laughs) Vermin. Vermin. We got vermin. (laughs) Um, The one good thing, Shandy, here's a tip. So we have, it's gross, but nobody's coming to our house. All the spiders have built webs, like, right outside all the windows we have in the back deck, like the dining room to the back. But we haven't had, like, we haven't had a damn bug get into the house in a while. And it's because all the spider webs are catching yeah. them before they can get in, like, through the cracks. That's so clever. it yeah. is clever. So don't clever. clean those off until you absolutely have to because nature will do its thing if you just let it. Yeah. And now it's seasonally appropriate. Yes. <laughs> decorations. Oh, yeah. my God. I cleaned. I cleaned so much this weekend i am ready to decorate for halloween i am so fucking excited like let's fucking go <laughs> that's true we actually have halloween decorations i'm gonna have to figure out where they are and yes that. nice Woo-hoo! very excited <laughs> october is a super busy month for all of us especially here on the broadcast next monday so we're gonna do it monday instead of um because zachary has a baseball game full disclosure so monday october 3rd we're going to talk about our Shakespeare reimagined stuff that we're going to watch. So uh, we're going to do Romeo and Juliet, the 95 version, O, oh, the Mikhail Pfeiffer version, and Much Ado About Nothing, which I believe is the 95 version? 90, 92. 92 it's the version? Kenneth Branagh. The Kenneth Branagh, yes. Kenneth Branagh version. So we would love your feedback for that. I haven't watched, rewatched, well, I've only seen. Romeo and Juliet, but I haven't done any of my homework yet. I have been bad. Blame it on Lord of the Rings, the pow- the Rings of Power, and... Is that good? Is it good? Yeah, I really like it. I tried to start it, and I was like, eh. It's a slow burn, but it's really good. I really like it. I look forward it to it like every week. Mm-hmm. Like, truly, I look forward to it every week. But, like, between that and She-Hulk and yeah, Andor... Rogue One is one of my favorite Star Wars, so I've got to watch Andor. Like, right. I feel like there's so much TV right now that I'm sorry. I've been a bad, bad, bad prepper. So I've got to watch all three of those movies this weekend. Um, I did the, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Yeah. Just because I knew, like, I'm too busy. Like, movies are very mm-hmm. hard to find the time yeah. to watch a full movie. So I was like, we got to start now. Yeah. We got to start now. Well, the good news is Jay um, does not, only wants to watch Romeo and Juliet with me. So I can watch the others at my leisure. I don't have to wait for Jay to do it is what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. but Liberating. Yeah. Yeah. So Monday, October 3rd, please send us your feedback. The broadcasters3 at gmail.com or give us a call 331-276-2373. We'll also have the normal Facebook post. Um, feel free to post there too. Um, and then on, I believe it is following week we are not going to be recording until we're going to do a live show for the patrons it was uh it's going to be on thursday october 13th 10 13 aka x files day so we'll celebrate x files day together we're going to do a a abbreviated show um but we will be live for the patrons that night because we're abbreviated so that way we can hopefully um post it without with minimal editing or no editing so 
Um, that will be then. October 18th, we'll talk about Halloween movies, which we'll get to in a second. And then October 25th, put it on your calendar. Zooming, costumes required. Boom. Not to get a costume. You were going to get one anyway. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's still like just it, a, a general statement that it uh, it's a thing yeah. I have to do. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got to figure, figure out, out what we're doing. Yeah, just keep speaking it in truth, you know, speak truth to power. Just keep I, saying I, it. I got to figure out what we're doing. Um, Alex's costume parade at daycare is October 14th. It's like super early this year. So like we really need to get our ass in gear <laughs> with these Halloween costumes. Thank, yeah, luckily, we have now two Spirit of Halloweens within... Two, three or four miles of my house at the Crabtree Valley Mall, they turned the Sears that closed down into a spirit of Halloween. Huh. That seems on brand. I and then like that every Sears has eventually become a spirit of Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> there was an amazing um, meme that went around after the Queen died, and it was Buckingham Palace with the spirit of Halloween banner across it. It was like, <laughs> man, they move fast. <laughs> It's funny. So funny. It was so funny. Um, <laughs> and then the Bed Bath and Beyond. So the hotel that some people have that's across the street. Um, the hotel that people have stayed at by Casa so Casa Carbone and mm-hmm. um, Fresh and um, you know all of, and uh, the First Watch. So right across the street from there is the shopping center where there's like the Ross and the Dollar Tree and. Um, there used to be a Bed Bath & Beyond there. Well, that Bed Bath & Beyond closed during the pandemic when all the rest of them closed. And now that's a spirit of Halloween as well. So the two ho- spirit of Halloweens are literally a mile and a half apart from each other. Nice. I've got all of my spirit of Halloween coupons. I activated the offer on my credit card where if you spend $75, <laughs> you get $25 off. And I'm like, I am there. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we're doing this weekend during the hurricane that, you know, is supposed to hit. <laughs> very, I'm very excited. No idea what Jay and I are going to be. We might dress up in something Geek Dad Life themed, like He-Man or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We'll nice. see. Nice. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, Halloween movies. So last year, we, we need every, we need suggestions and we need these suggestions like immediately. Like if you're listening to this, stop right now, <laughs> press pause or don't press pause if you can remember. I can't do two things at once, but like go to the Facebook page or go to any way you can contact us and give us mm-hmm. your suggestions for Halloween movies. Last year, we each watched a couple of them that were the same and then we sort of, you know, chose our own adventures and talked about them just to keep the pressure low. I think... The one that we are all agreed upon that we're definitely going to all watch this year is Hocus Pocus 2. I think we got to. And then I guess we'll take it from there. They're uh, Lost fans. I don't know if you guys have seen Jorge Garcia's Instagram, but uh, he is in the Rob Zombie new release of the Munster movie, The Munsters. So okay. I, it's on Netflix. I think I'm going to check that one out. It's one of mine. I like The Munsters. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then... Um, I don't know. I guess we'll keep a tally of what we're watching if anybody else wants to watch with us. Um, were there there were some that we ta- have briefly talked about, but uh, I'm really excited to watch Halloween movies. I thought because the suggestions that you sent calling Beetlejuice. included Beetlejuice, which... Um, mm. I'd watch Beetlejuice. Yeah. I love Beetlejuice. I Yeah, I haven't seen it for years. It would be really fun to go back to. I don't know if I've actually ever seen the movie. Okay, then we need to. The yeah. cast is amazing. You've never seen Beetlejuice? No. I went to see the Broadway uh, musical uh, with uh, JP and Roe back in the in the before times, and it was really a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a great night out. Great do company. They do the, great show. The Tally the Bananas song? Like, yes. uh, okay. Yeah. So that's in there, too? <laughs> yeah, I was in there, too. Classic. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, it was like the songs Classic. you kind of remembered from the movie, yeah. but then like an, an original score. Okay, so we're definitely going to do Hocus Pocus and Beetlejuice yeah. as our Beetlejuice. two. I don't, like, it's been so long since I've seen Beetlejuice that I honestly don't even remember, like, how it ends. Oh. So, very excited. We watch it. Uh, Jay watches it every year. He watched nice. it with Zach last year because we're great parents. Um. <laughs> oh, that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Um, it's probably when I saw it also and why I can't remember the ending. Oh. It's a long time ago. There yeah. There you go. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the other suggestions were Witches of Eastwick, which I've never seen, uh, The Craft, which I haven't watched in a long time, 
Um, oh, I there's also the remake of The Craft, which I was oh, right. I was oh, I, I yeah. was told not to watch, but then I watched it and I thought it was fun. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I heard yeah. that you sh- that it wasn't that good, and then I realized I heard it from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was t- I was told, and I had heard that this good. that people people were kind of like, and I'm assuming it might be similar to Hocus Pocus. People were like, if you liked the the original craft, like don't watch the new one because it's gonna ruin it for you. Yeah. And then I watched it anyway, and I and I liked it. So cool. Yeah, I suppose it's like the layer of fandom. You know, yeah. it's like how how into something are you to have it hurt the you know? Yeah. 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 I like both. Always. Good classics. So it wasn't like a Little Women situation for you. No, no, it wasn't a Little Women situation for me. But I haven't seen the original craft as many times as I've seen the yeah. 1994 version of the Little Women. So okay. fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll um, by next week. I think. I think we definitely. It's good that we definitely have two that we're all, we're all going to watch, especially because we've got the other three <laughs> assignments. Yeah. That might be all I have time for. I, and not that's exactly lie, why, yeah. like, very... Do not very, have, movies are very hard to get through yes. these days. Mm-hmm. Low pressure. This is all very low pressure, the Halloween movies. Watch what you can, talk about it, and, uh, you know, that's that's that. But, you know, I think that for December, um, what we'll do for December is the only special thing we'll do is the Christmas movies. Because I think we all genuinely enjoy watching all the Christmas movies. Yes, yes. we do. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that will be December's topic. We'll have to think of something for October, for November, and um, you know, call it a year. Woo! Yay! Uh, <laughs> That's weird. Other than mm. cockroaches and snakes and and oh my. Uh, anything else? Oh my! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and hurricanes, I guess. And hurricanes. It's funny because I was having these feelings this week of like. I just like really like I love our house. I like our neighborhood. Yay! The weather's starting to like oh, it's be been so very nice pleasant. To come down. Yeah. It's just like all these like warm fuzzies. Um and you know, the snakes and whatnot don't negate them, but <laughs> it was just like Even a, snakes right. can't kill my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> It was, um, I think it was a reality check. It was, it's like, oh yeah, people have talked about this and it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you do get used to the snakes, like, like seeing one, like you don't. Well, and honestly, like it's not even so much for me because I can. Right. You're scared well, to see- I- with Gabby. Exactly. I can easily not take the garbage out at night. Like that's. That's fine. <laughs> I yeah. can make sure to mow my lawn, like, because I do have a lawnmower now. Like, you know, I, that's fine. I can be careful, but yeah. Yeah. A little gabbers. And, I, and this is her. How, how like, bad would it be if she, like, is it, because she's small. I mean, she's small. She's, she's big, small. Like, so she's small. You yeah. would probably have to get her to the vet pretty quickly, but they can give her an anti venom. I mean, fuck. <gasps> They can give her an anti-venom and she should be okay. You know, I there's stories on my next door about pets getting bit by copperheads fairly regularly. And none of them are ever, like, you know, the sad kind. <laughs> so, okay. but generally, you know, just pay attention. If your cat, you hear your cat or dog, like, cry out. Yeah. Um, and then just try to get them to the vet to get the anti-venom. And, and most, most places carry them. Maybe research around ahead of time so you have a, it might make you feel better to have like a game plan, like a place yeah. to call. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like it, it's the same with like little kids too, like, you know, kids yeah. under like three yeah. or four that have the same yeah. thing where, it, you know, mark, mark if you can, make sure you mark where they got um, bit. Uh, I've always seen recommendations if you can get a picture of the snake so that way the vet knows if it's a big snake mm. or a little snake. Right, they know um, what they're dealing with. They know what they're dealing with, yeah. I mean, the thing, though, too, is, like, it's it's not like having a dog in your backyard. Like, she's a cat. Like, I don't mm-hmm. always – she doesn't go far, but I don't always have eyes on her. Right. right. Well, most people don't have eyes on their pets if they're fenced in or they're, like – But they at least know that their pet's only going to be in that area. In a certain area. vicinity, yeah. Right, right. And like, so, they, like, if it yelps, they can go – you know what I mean? Like – yeah. Yeah. Oh, Gabby. We're in the last month of snake season. Once it gets below like 70, 
you know, your chances are, they come out at nighttime because they're soaking up, like, the warm ground from the rest of the day. That's why dusk mm. is, you know, very whatever. Mm. That's um, interesting. Yeah. So just be aware that they, they're they active all day because they like to sun themselves because they're cold-blooded. Right. But, like, they're particularly more active at night because they're getting the last, that last, like, heated groundness uh-huh. before <laughs> it. Yeah. <sighs> it's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, you know, like my other thing with going into this, I was like not super nervous about it. Cause I was like, cats are afraid of snakes. Like that's why all those videos with the, you know, putting the cucumber next to a cat and they freak out. Like, it's like maybe not so funny because actually they kind of think it's a snake and that's why they freak out. So I was like, oh, that's fine. I mean, that's the like the response mm-hmm. like I want her to have. So then to see her just like super curious, like, do do do. What yeah. are you? <laughs> no. No, you California cat. <laughs> Somebody once told Come me on. that if you put ivory soap in your yard, it it scares away the snakes. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Huh. It's just like, oh, that new neighbor with the bars of soap in her. <laughs> <laughs> she seems nice, but I don't know. The soap's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, those California people, they're crazy, man. <laughs> Some kind of new age hippy dippy shit. <laughs> well, and I did. So the next morning, like when I when I went outside um, for work, I like went by where the snake was to like check out the spot and you know it was gone as i expected yeah but it's like where did where did it go they move pretty know. quick too because i've only seen a copperhead direct i mean i've seen them like run over in the streets and like at the lakes or whatever but like Ugh. um i've only seen one close to my house once and it crossed uh so not like by my driveway but like not onto my property if that makes sense and it was when Zoe was dying and I remember looking at it and being like you are an evil omen (laughs) and I kept driving and then I was like why didn't I run over it and kill it and then I was like I can't kill a living thing even if it's like deadly like I just couldn't bring myself to do it but like I turned around after I pulled the car away because I I had a stare down with this thing I was in the car I was not scared Yeah, (laughs) but like I backed up maybe, maybe 10 seconds later, 15 seconds, if that, and it was already gone. Like, it was wow. pretty quick. So, anyway, okay, happier things, happier things. Yes. Speaking, so speaking of dangerous situations like that, this is so interesting that we're talking about this as the same time we're talking about this other thing. Um, there was a BuzzFeed article that went around a week or so ago. And it was uh, people are revealing how listening to their intuition saved their lives. But BuzzFeed uh, uh, compiled these. And let's see. Here is some examples. All right. So this does come from BuzzFeed. Uh, I guess there was an article that the author wrote about intuitive people listening to their guts. And then more people uh, shared their own stories. So the first one was, or one of them, I'm skipping around, but... My adult daughter woke up one night at 2 a.m. because her husband, she felt her husband kicking her. Uh, she sat up to confront him, and after, and after she said something to him, he just grunted and tried to go back to sleep. She felt something was off because he didn't respond, only grunted. She kept him awake and knew something was really wrong. He couldn't talk or stand on his own. She woke, her to, uh, woke up her two daughters, had them get help. Had them help get him into the car. She took him to the hospital and was he was admitted right away. The doctors found that he had a brain bleed and very well could have died if he had gone back to sleep or waited for the ambulance. Oh my god. Oof. Since then he's had test runs. They discovered where the bleeding has come from and he had surgery to fix the bleeding. That was from Leah Ross. Uh, this next one is from somebody who goes by Canelo, and they said I was planning to visit my family in Indonesia for the Id al-Fitir. Fitir. I, I know what the Ids are. I can never pronounce them. I'm so sorry. And found some reasonably priced flight tickets online. I was about to make the payment, then uh, felt something telling me not to. So I canceled it. A few months later, Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 was shot down while <gasps> flying over the Ukraine. That was the flight I'd canceled. Do you guys remember Whoa. that? I remember that. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. This happened to me when I was, uh, and this is this, I'm sorry, this next one is from somebody that went, goes by J. Raleigh, R-A-W-L-E-I-G-H, <laughs> 52. 
It happened after a play rehearsal. As I was leaving my high school, uh, there was a small hill to the left of the red light. While I was waiting for the light to turn green, a conversation I had with my father popped into my head. It was a story he told me when I was younger, for when I learned how to drive. He told me when he was 17, a car ran the red at 100 miles per hour, looking before going, saved my dad's life. When the light was, when I let I was waiting for a turn green, my gut told me, look left. Suddenly a car appeared over the hill and sped through the red light at no less than 80 miles per hour. If I had pulled forward, that car would have smashed into my driver's side. Mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the father-son talk about my dad's near-death experience saved me from my own. Um, This reminds me of a story that I have, and I think I may have told this, but I'm not sure if we were doing the broadcast at the time. I was going for a walk one day, and I had to cross a street. I had to cross a street, like, to get to the other side of the sidewalk. It wasn't a super busy street, but, you know, it was, you know, trafficked. It wasn't like, oh, you know, cars came. And um, I was texting with Colky about something. And it had to be before this because I was G-chatting with him on my phone about something. Mm. And the light, like the walk sign went on for me to cross. But I looked down at my phone because he had messaged me. And I looked down to read the text. And because I didn't step off the curb right away, a car went like barreling past and probably would have hit me. (gasps) And I always tell Colky he saved my life. Oh, my God. And I, I do think that that was before we started the broadcast because, again, G-Chat. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. I think that was all but over by the time we started. Yeah. So, I, But I always remember that. Like, that wasn't even my gut. That was just, like, pure luck. But, yeah. like, yay texting while walking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the one time that worked uh, in the reverse. It worked right. so well for me. <laughs> Shandy, you'll appreciate this story. When I was a kid in rural California, I was playing outside with my dog. He was walking by my side and ran a few steps to the side, acting playful like he wanted me to follow him. I had a feeling I should. After taking a few steps towards him, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. There was a baby rattlesnake right where I would have stepped if I hadn't followed my dog. He may have saved my life. Oh, my gosh. Dun, dun, dun. That was from Andif. Adif? I don't Screen names are tough, guys. It's really hard they to really, know. They really are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next one. I was pregnant with my now daughter, and I was getting uh, in the left turning lane in my car. Another car abruptly cut me off to get in front of me. Normally, I'd be a little more aggress- aggressive, but I felt like I should just let it go. We were at the red light, and a car turning left in the opposite direction slammed into the car in front of me that cut me off. It would have been me and my unborn baby. It would have been the car me and my unborn baby were in. Sometimes it pays to be patient. Yes. It always also, pays to be patient. Also, exactly. I was going to say, you should always let it go. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's, it's just super not worth it. it. Always. I totally agree. It's, it's, it, 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 yeah, totally agree. Um, my friends and I were planning, this next one is from, oh, I'm sorry, that last one was from Mass 1987. This next one is from TK405. My friends and I were planning to go to the ghost ship party in Oakland that burned down. We were right outside, and we all just didn't feel like going in. So at the last minute, I made the call for us to go home. I woke up to news of the fire. Rest (gasps) in peace, all the amazing souls lost that night. Oof. Right? Um, mm-hmm. Have you guys, I think there's a, it's a book. Again, this is from when I used to listen to Mysterious Universe before they all turned into horrible, misogynistic, <laughs> uh, homophobe transphobes. But I really did enjoy the show. But they <laughs> once talked about, uh, there was a book of people who had like stories that were like premonitions of 9-11. Not like Nostradamus kind of premonitions, but just like, hey, maybe, uh you know, don't like hit snooze on the alarm today yeah. or um, maybe work from home, work from home or go get a cup of coffee. Mm. Like just people that had these real weird feelings or, you know, I think I feel like one of them was like some some I, I forget the exact story because, again, it was it was several years ago that they covered it. But um, it, it, somebody it was like. Right before the planes hit, he had the urge to go to the stairwell, and he ended up 
uh, was in the stairwell when the towers hit and uh, when the planes hit and helped people. Like, he was in the stairwell and was able to help people get out. Like, just crazy, just, you know, um, Sixth Sense kind of stories like that. This is what these all remind me of, actually. I, I should, I should, I'm sure Matt knows what I'm talking about. Any of the Matt's, Triest loves TV. <laughs> yeah. Though they're the same person. Ek Eikhoff loves TV. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> Dan might know. Um, Matt's assemble. Uh, but now they're, uh, I kind of want to go back to go to their website and like go to their back catalog and see if I can read episode descriptions to because they always like link to the books that they talk about because now I am kind of curious of what that was anyway yeah I do kind of want to whatever okay um moving on well just to finish up uh, we'll just do a couple more and then you know if we, if we all like these if there's good feedback if anybody else has stories like this I can uh, read more another day um, okay. In February, my dad went into the hospital after he fell one morning. In the emergency room, they discussed a possible stroke, but he wasn't showing symptoms, and they even tested him for it. Since he fell and they couldn't lower his blood pressure, they kept him overnight. For some reason, I wanted to stay. I don't know why. I said I'd sit with him as long as it was allowed. He finally fell asleep around midnight, and I dozed off shortly after 3 a.m. In my dream, I heard my dad calling me by full name, not my nickname he normally calls me. I jolted awake out of the chair and asked if he was okay. He said he felt funny and couldn't move his left hand, but that he didn't want to bother a nurse. I ran out to grab a nurse. My dad had suffered a stroke right there in the hospital that (gasps) night. And since my dad received a bed in the staff changeover, someone forgot to place a heart monitor on him. (gasps) If I wasn't there, the staff would have caught the stroke much later. He was able to recover, and he's doing great. Every time I see that nurse, she always praises my instinct to stay with him, and I always thank her for pushing the rules and letting me stay. Oh. And that was from Row Row 7. Row Row. Row Row. (laughs) And then I will do, let's see. Oh, I'll do one more. It's a 9-11 story. And if everybody likes these, I have no problem saving this. There's a whole bunch. There's there's a whole bunch more, but I have no problem saving this for another day if we have, you know, thumbs up from everyone. Yeah, um, I want to hear people's stories too because I know some people must yes. have some. Uh, My neighbor worked in investment years ago, and it took him all over the country to large businesses. He was supposed to meet with a company on September 11th, 2001, and they were located in one of the Twin Towers. My neighbor felt something was off, and he recently had twins, so he opted out of the business trip to stay home with his wife and newborns. If he had gone, he would have been in one of those towers that day. He said it still haunts them to this day. And that's from Happy Little Bee. Oh, my God. I know, right? I bet. All right. We can stop there, but like I said, uh, that's only about halfway through. So there's a ton more that they compiled. Let's see. Uh, there is at least there's at least 14 more that I haven't read. So if you want to hear more, we can continue this. Let us know. You know how to get in touch with us. <laughs> Perfect October material. I know. Yeah, that is true. Uh, that I always is true. I always love October on the broadcast. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> All right. On that note, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we can do some feedback. Also, I know I didn't play us out with the uh, crazy sex song last week, but I did end up going back and downloading the song and putting the full thing in after we said goodbye. And (laughs) listened through it the whole way and laughed. (laughs) So good. (laughs) So good. So weird. So weird. <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be back in a minute. All right. We are back. We're ready to get into some feedback. The first bit of feedback is from our Facebook group, and it's from Mandy. Mandy says that Maddie and I are team button than zip. Mike, her husband, and Mac other daughter were zip then button it all started from me taking mac jean shopping do not recommend jean shopping for teens i don't recommend jean shopping for 38 year olds so Seriously. anybody Seriously. That's just a very hard thing to do worse. is there anything worse than jean shopping it's the fucking worst it's shoe shopping. women's jean shoe shopping. shopping is worse oh but i, I like trying on the shoes i do I not don't. like trying on shoes. jeans i hate shoes I hate oh them. i like shoes rather just wear Birkenstocks forever. Yeah. yeah you know, good. 
That's a good point. I, and that's why I have, like, my, my three pairs of Rothies that I just alternate in between, and uh, we're good. <laughs> like, yeah, even Rothies. I don't even like Rothies. I know. I managed to get a pair, and they don't, they hurt. Uh, uh, I even uh. did that wrong. <sighs> I know, I feel so bad. Like, my first pair of Rothies were just, I can't describe just how comfortable they were. Now, the newer ones that Jay got me as a Valentine's Day gift last year, the red ones, they actually, I get to a point where my feet actually do hurt in them. Like, they're just, they feel mm-hmm. like, they feel different. Like, they don't stretch the same way mm-hmm. as the the first pair I got and, like, the black pair. So, I don't know if they've changed something in how they make them. But I do notice a difference between my Christmas 2019 pair and my mm-hmm. Valentine's Day 2022 mm-hmm. gift. Yeah, but, like, that's sort of around, like, I think I bought my pair definitely mm-hmm. pre-pandemic. So it was okay. Like- 2018, 2019. Sure. Oh. And I just, yeah, they just never, I like got, a, and it was even like I had sent the original pair back for yeah. this pair and they still weren't that comfortable. And Are, I was like, I, I always feel weird or? about like returning something more. I always feel about weird about returning something or exchanging it just in general, mm-hmm. but then having to do it more than once, like I just feel like it's just like a weird thing for me. So I'm just like, oh, I guess I'll just keep them. It's fine. Oh. You, you said you have the point. I have the point. Okay, see, mine are, are the classic or whatever the one that's the point is. Yeah, like the ballet flat. Yeah, whatever whatever that normal one is, which I guess is maybe not as sophisticated as the point, but like I know my feet, and I just you know I've got I've got big old spider toes. So <laughs> yeah, got like kind of yeah finger toes. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that my feet were designed for like. Climbing rocks barefoot as a Neanderthal or something. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not pretty, but they're yeah, well no. structured. I have, like, I have like hobbit feet. I have like the little like hairs on like yeah. the knuckle of my my big toe. Actually, I do they're too. Not cute. They're not cute. No, very recently Jay looked at my feet and he was like, "You have hairy toes," and I was like, "I'm Italian." Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Because yeah, I do too. Yeah. I'm, they're blonde just, hairs, but like they're hairs yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, like well, mine are. People have hairs on their toes. It's like part of being. Yeah. Human. Like again, they're, I also they're very. It's very light, but everywhere. like you know. Well, yeah, yeah. We, we've got hair everywhere. Like that's just yeah. that's who we are. That's cool. Um, sorry. Anyway, Mandy, I so I think we all three have paid attention this past week. I <laughs> believe that I am solidly button then zip. I paid attention. I generally wear dresses to work, but I actually purposely wore pants several days <laughs> and then shorts with zippers and buttons this weekend uh-huh. instead of my normal just spandex shorts wow. that I wear to like the baseball games because I you really did wanted to know. Research. I did. I did. And I believe that I am solidly button and zip. Yeah. See, I didn't have to think about it. Like, I know I am button and zip. Like, I just. Yeah. It, it's not even like I didn't even. I don't even think about it. Like, and that's your superpower. Yeah, this is always how I've done my pants. Yes. And I maintain that I'm both depending on the pants. You go both ways. Feels like a metaphor for life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 You just uh, do uh, what's convenient. Mm-hmm. You, that's you know smart. what? You pants smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something a bully would say. <laughs> I think that might be the episode title, Pants Smarter, Not Harder. <laughs> Don't write that one down. I like that. I don't know where that came from. a 13-year-old bully would say. <laughs> All right, cool. Good times. Um, <laughs> moving on, Ro said that she put on her first pair of jeans since May, and it was button and zipper. Holler. Um, <laughs> That's a movement. <laughs> uh, Maggie says, I'm excited to listen to the episode. Can't wait till October 4th. Now October 3rd. Mm-hmm. I love the movies mm-hmm. you picked. Much Ado About Nothing is one of my favorites. I believe I own on DVD. I'll be rewatching and sending in feedback. Well, nice. we look forward to it. We're going to hold you to that. Yep. Yes. Indeed. Um, Jessica said, you guys mes- mentioned the uh, U.S. and the Holocaust. Have you all gotten to watch it yet? If so, what did you think? It's so sad and aggravating how many countries, not just the U.S., turn their backs on the, to the Jewish people. Also scary how quickly people can be pulled into a cult-like group. Oh, wait. That's happening today with Trump. Trump. For something lighter, I know Colleen is watching it, but is everyone watching She-Hulk? 
It's so great. Such a fun show. I hope it gets a season two. Okay, that's my feedback. I haven't <laughs> watched US and the Holocaust yet, but I can speak about She-Hulk all day. It's so fucking fun. Guys, it's so fun. Truly, truly fun. It's Tatiana Mansley, the one. I thought she looked familiar, and I couldn't figure out why. Are, are you watching it? No. Oh, but it's like, so fun. But like the just everywhere. So the first two episodes, because they're only like 23 minutes, they go by very fast. It's literally like a comic book, like a, a comic strip in a movie, like in a TV show. Um because sometimes you're like, oh, it's over? Like, I'm used to these things, like, then going on to, like, you know, subplot two, three, and four. But no, like, <laughs> they're, you know, they're very focused. And, like, the first two episodes are pretty set up -y. Like, you don't get a whole big sense of the universe. But, like, once everybody's set, it's 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 really fun. Um, Renee Elise Goldsberry's in it. Oh, I do love her too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we and finished a league of their own last night, so maybe. We'll oh, move on. what did you Ooh. think? I love. I it. have like one episode left. It's oh. really. It's very satisfying. It's, it's like oh. a really, and it's like they set it up like there's going to be season. Yeah, two. they ended a cliffhanger, just, and if it doesn't yeah. end at a cliffhanger, I've thought about this. I'm okay with that too. If it doesn't end on a cliffhanger. Yeah, me too. Like, if I mean, it ends on a cliffhanger, like, but if we don't get the payoff from that, I'm okay right. with that. Right. It still feels pretty satisfying. Yeah. But, like, I just, I was watching it thinking that it was just this, like, one off yeah. thing that they made and that it wasn't going to, like, it was mm -hmm. going to have a mm -hmm. neat ending. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah. That's exciting. I hope by next time I will have finished because I really do think I have, like, one episode left. I started watching it last week and I was like, how did it take me so long to watch something? It's so with good. Abby and Janet. Yeah, like, yeah. What? It's really, it's really, really good. <laughs> it's really good, and Rosie O'Donnell, and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And like everybody, like the whole cast is just super, super great. Yes. And really? when you yeah. finish, Shandy, most of the pe uh, the women in that cast are queer or non-binary, and they have some really great interviews of just like how, what it's oh, like fun. to. Oh, they do. Yeah. Like, just on the interwebs, or yes. they, are they like bonus things? Uh, oh, it might be bonus. I never do bonus. I always just go straight to the interweb. So they might actually okay. be getting these from the bonus content. Okay. But I'll go check the interweb. Yeah, like uh, you know, they talk about what it's like to be like queer and non-binary, or you know, uh, uh, in Hollywood in general, and mm. you know what it was like working on the show. So. Um, but, um, yeah, no, like they, they do have some really great interviews. Like the, the woman that plays the, um, the pitcher, mm -hmm. um, Lupe. Awesome. yes, Lupe. Thank you. It's, it's been a month since I've watched it, which means I've automatically forgot everybody's name. Yeah. Including, fresh, fresh in the old noggin. Yes. Including, um, the main stars. Like, I don't remember Janet's well, name. In I mean, Abby's <laughs> always going to be Abby and I'm sorry, but Janet, even though it's not. It's always going to be Janet. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna like, I don't Janet. remember the character. All of a sudden, but it's like, like, wow, she is very tall. Yeah, she is very tall. She's very tall yeah, and very, very beautiful. Tall. Super. Again, recommend a league of their own. I think we're getting yes. like six thumbs up right now. Yeah, it was very good. It, it was really, yeah, it was yeah. A really enjoyable watch. Um, but it, what were we talking about? Um, oh shit, <laughs> what TV show were we talking about before? She Hulk. She Hulk. She Hulk. She Hulk. Also super fun. Yeah, and I feel like that's what I need. I feel like that's what, like, life is stressful. I just need, like, 20 minutes of, like, enjoyment to, like, transition and that's my exactly brain what to is. bedtime. And that's, right? that's, all I, that's all I have the, like, emotional capacity for it, right now. It constantly... You can keep your, your House of the Dragons. You can keep your head, <laughs> your heady stuff. I just, I, like, can't with that energy right now. Yeah, no, this is super fun. Like it. Yeah, I think that's what I need right now. I feel yes. like that's, that's the speed I'm operating at. It is. And again, they go okay. very quickly. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, and uh, Shani, Renee Elise Goldsberry is um, Wiki from Girls 5 Ever. Um, she doesn't take a bigger part, Amanda, until later in the season. I think we've got two left, but she's okay. set up early on, and then it kind of, you know, she disappears for a couple episodes. But regardless, okay. nice. the whole show is, it's so yeah. fun. And. One of the best things about the show is that uh, uh, She-Hulk is that it actually is very self-aware. Like, she'll have – her character's name is Jennifer. She'll have points where she's, like, talking to the camera, like, breaking the third wall. And they also specifically call out toxic fandom. So, like, they'll actually talk about, like, how, uh, you know, this is – one of the characters from the Marvel Universe is in it. 
a couple of times. Not the, like the Hulk is in it, but like another character that is a beloved character. And she actually calls him something like um, uh, Twitter armor or something or Reddit armor. Like him being on it's going to stop the haters from like shit talking the episode for once because like there's a male that's like kind of a focus of a story. And like it's very, very funny. There's it, it calls out like toxic fandoms nonstop. Every single episode is just making fun of those people. So right. it's huh. really just fun in general. Like they obviously they looked at it, they were self aware, they were like, Oh, a quirky strong female character. Clearly people are gonna come for her and they just basically like piss them I off them. by predicting what they're going to say about each episode in each episode so it's really fun that's hilarious (laughs) yeah it is hilarious you're selling this well i'm into it all right thanks i'm glad i have really enjoyed it (laughs) so um also speaking of things that we watched i forgot to mention that i went to um woman king oh how was it i was wondering if you saw it two thumbs up oh good nice okay I mean, it's Viola Davis, so, like, it really, yeah. like, that was the yeah. only option. It was going to be two thumbs up or, like... Or one and a half thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it just, yeah. The other she main women no are wrong. awesome, also. Um, I liked it a lot. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. good, good, good. I'm yeah. happy to hear this. Me too. Um, and then the U.S. and the Holocaust, I actually have not watched it yet. I have not either. No, nor have I. Which we should. It's like, but yeah, I feel like all Ken Burns documentaries. So it's like, I need to watch this. This is very important. It's very important, but yeah, very heavy. I think it's like, it's, it's long winded, long winded. <laughs> but um, just like on the topic of like nations around the world, including the U.S. turning their backs on uh, on the Jewish people. Like, I feel like that's something that we sort of like omit from our narrative like we have this narrative of like the u.s came in and saved the day in world war ii yeah. but like but you know. you know there's there's also more to the story yeah yeah um the amount really, of- i'm just hoping i get like a cold and i just have to stay home and like watch things that's like <laughs> We're coming. i can i can try to send you the bronchitis i had <laughs> Like a month or two ago, because that wiped me out for a full week of work and then some. We are coming up to cold and flu season. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, <laughs> but also sort of like that's the only way you're gonna, you know. Yeah, let the record show stuff. that Amanda just blessed herself in some way to stay healthy, but also not stay healthy. Yeah, it was unclear. It was, <laughs> it was an unclear. It was an unclear. Yeah. Uh, ritual <laughs> I, we should be able to take a week of sick leave to, to like stay home and watch and, tv yes i mean seriously to like recharge yeah but not I, have it cut into your actual vacation time. but if you're watching a documentary a multiple part documentary about the holocaust are you really recharging <laughs> some would argue not That's fair. <laughs> some would argue yeah but you're learning something but you're Jeez. learning I, Jay watches a lot of the Ken Burns documentaries, so honestly, I kind of just figure whenever he gets around to it, I'll just pop in and mm. watch over his shoulder, which is generally how this happens 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Because I'm not just, unless I have like a motivation or reason to put on the TV, I, I just generally don't. Like that's, you know, just, I just don't. Um, yeah. yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We started yeah. Ben Franklin, which was their um, their other documentary oh, earlier yeah. in the year. Very interesting, but like the d- dense, like we couldn't even get through one episode. <laughs> gotcha. Because it's like you just, and not because it wasn't good, because it was very good, but it was just like, you know, you sort of need to take breaks with that stuff to let the information really sink in. Yeah. That's like how I got stuck on like page 250 of Obama's yes. Yes. Like this book. Yeah. Obama, <laughs> you know, book. many of things. Verbose, <laughs> definitely one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Concise, not so much. No. Concise, not so much. <laughs> I'm sure he's capable of being concise when he wants to. to yeah, because he masters all. I don't think that communication, Ob- but I don't think Morris Obama is good is at a- picking someone to like edit him down. <laughs> yes, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think he edits smarter or harder ever. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, moving on. Rose says, uh, totally different suggestion. Um, Oh, thank you, Jessica, for that feedback. Um, 
Rose says, totally different suggestion. Since we've done a shoe sock and button zipper, I thought we could try a few more of these over the next few weeks for some lighter fare. Love it. Yes. Shirt or pants first? Pants. Usually shirt. Oh, It depends. Well, because you'd want to match your pants to your shirt, right? Well, I mean, I like... Or your shirt to your I pants. think I know what I'm putting on when I start putting... I, I, I don't always. I, I don't always. Yeah, generally don't. I mean, I that's why I wear a lot of dresses, because it's easy. Mm. Yeah. 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 Say I'm very into the, like, the new, the high-waist pant now. Mm. So now it's, like, kind of re like mm. I've got to put shirt mm-hmm. on first because you have to tuck it into the mm-hmm. high-waisted pants. Very true. So yeah. Like, you know. You know what? Now I'm rethinking about this morning. I think I put pants on first. So. I almost always do pants first. Just... I never know what I want to wear. So it's unless I have a set outfit combo, then it'll just it'll just depend. Mm. But generally I'm like, oh, these pants look good. But uh, again, most often I default to a dress cuz it's again the easiest thing. <laughs> like there's only one thing to decide. So in the winter, do you put on tights or nylons first and then dress or vice versa? No, in the winter, if I'm wearing like a tunic or a dress, I'll put the dress on and then the the tights or or Mm. the nylons or the leggings on second, generally. Um, Just because it's cold, man. I don't, you know, I want to get those arms covered up quickly. (laughs) 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 All right. Next is uh, brush your teeth before, during, or after shower. Before. Oh. Ideally before. I like to be completely clean when I get out of the shower. Interesting. I'm, a, I'm an after, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I. So I think I've told you guys this, that I the last thing I do before I go to sleep is brush my teeth. And that's because, and, I, and, and I've done the like hack in the middle of the night. If I can't sleep, I'll like do mouthwash or something. Because there's something about like that clean uh, mouth feeling that mm-hmm. helps calm me down to go to sleep. I don't, it's probably just Pavlovian conditioning for... 30 something years but the last thing I do is brush my teeth unless I wake up with like some real nasty breath and brush my teeth first which you know sometimes happens because I'm a human being I generally will it, it'll depend it'll depend if Jay's if it's in the morning and Jay's in the shower and we have like an actual thing to be to then I'll just brush my teeth first if it's like a normal morning and I've you know got shower rights then i will probably do it second mine depends it just depends on logistics i'm a logistical teeth brusher in the morning (laughs) because i always like to brush my teeth like the last thing i do before i leave the house oh because then you have good smelling breath yeah you know it's like you've it's like the last thing you do to like i'm feeling good i'm ready to go right take it on the day i do (laughs) agree with that i do agree with that i think that if i'm showering like, you know, on my own or whatever, like on the weekend, I think I brush my teeth last. But again, I don't know. Everybody yeah. in my family hates coffee breath, which has actually also made me change my strategy where sometimes I'll just brush my teeth after I'm done with coffee because like my kids hate it. Jay hates it. Like everybody will be like, ah, coffee breath. And I'm like, guys, coffee is not that bad. Like there's worse things your breath could smell like, but okay. Yeah, really? Yeah, but I think that's also why it's like I brush my teeth the last, like you know, back in the before time where I would like leave the house, because um, <laughs> I was always an eat breakfast at home before I went to work person. Yeah, so it was like I eat breakfast, then brush my teeth, and then leave, and dry and dry my hair. I would like dry my hair, brush my teeth, and then go. All right, all right. Well, um, next question: uh, first thing you take off when you get home after your jacket? I think. Shoes. Oh, shoes. Shoes. I use shoes first. Pants. And then pants. <laughs> I'm very surprised that nobody has said bra first. Yeah. Again, I also don't really leave the house anymore. Mm. <laughs> and I'm still wearing like nursing bras. So it's sort of like I'm comfortable all the time now. Nice. nice. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't really. Yeah. I use it, shoes first. And then, I mean, like, honestly, usually, like, I do, when I get out of my pants, a lot of times I will also put on like a bralette and like uh, a comfy shirt. Yeah. So it's just kind of like the whole thing. Yeah. Once. But definitely pants. Yeah, pants. I agree. I, mm. I Especially in the summertime in the South because it's so hot. Like you, you can't come home and still wear pants. You got to put your shorts on or something. Like, mm. yeah, agreed. Um, all right. Next question. 
Uh, shave before, after, or during a shower? During. Always during. Yeah, during. Yeah. During. But I now turn off the water. Yeah. Oh. Let me serve a little bit. I like have a cup and I fill up the cup and I like turn the water off. And oh, that's it so good. I don't even use shaving. Cup and I refill it again and I do the other leg. That's See, awesome. I just turn off the water and then do the whole leg and then rinse it with the shower. So doing it at the same time. My whole thing is like wash my hair and then while my hair is getting like whatever is when I just shave real quick. I don't use shaving cream anymore or anything like that. Yeah. I just Shaving cream is a super scam. Yeah. Oh, it, I like it. I mean, I like it, but I, I haven't used it in a long time. I like the ritual of it, I guess. Yeah. And I feel like well, it and helps. And it, it is, it's extra, like, soft, but, but I mean, scam in the sense that, like, it's an extra product that you don't actually need. And if you, if people still want to buy it and, like, how it feels, like, no judgment. But, like, I think I had this idea when I was younger that, like, you had to shave with shaving cream and you, you don't. So men cute. probably I do. Oh, I feel like I have very sensitive skin. Whenever I try and like do it without, like you know, if you run out, because there's always that where you like, yeah, think the you have watery part of it, <laughs> nothing comes out, and you're yeah. like, well, yeah. goddamn. I feel like it's not as good of a shave when I just try and like do a little soap. Yeah. Like I feel like it's not, it's never as good of a shave. Interesting. Okay. So maybe maybe that's just my body. Oh, yeah, everybody's but, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why you turn your water off. Whereas me, I do everything at the same time. Like while the shampoo is ringing down me, I'm like, all right, get the legs. And I, you know, I frequently miss the knees and the ankles, but whatever. <laughs> well, I do. I have like a leave-in conditioner that I have in the hair while I'm doing it. Gotcha. And I rinse that out too. Gotcha. Okay. So I am multi. I am multitasking. multitasking. Yeah. I am multitasking. Yeah. I'll sometimes leave my shampoo in until it starts running into my eyes. Next question: Are you a zero unopened email person? Or are you awful? I mean, do you keep emails unread? I only keep them unread when I need to go back to them because mm, I same, same. Well, yeah. I, I don't always remember just because I get so many. But generally, I am as low as possible email reader. Whereas Jay yeah. is a complete yeah. fucking psychopath. Oh, has like my 50 God. 50,000. <gasps> literally like 16,000, oh, yes, 18,000. Yes, yes. I'm like, I'm like same. what are you doing? How do you it see is, things? What if there's nothing important? What if your doctor emails you that you have like cancer, but you didn't see it because you just decided to not like check your email? Uh, yeah. uh. No, Frank is one hundred percent the same. Just seeing his comp- his um his uh, phone screen like is stressful. I stressful. currently I currently have two unread emails in my Gmail. Um, both of them are from me. Just saying, yes. <laughs> they're like basically notes to self, and they're un. They're I've read them and then marked them as unread because I have to. That's what I do too. That's I what to I do, do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always yeah. read them and I, I and yeah. then I will mark them unread. And they're right. generally and at work. Either- I have one unread email that I'm prepared to deal with tomorrow. Like yeah. and that's it. They're either so like broadcast emails unread. that I wait until, if, especially if we're like have an off week, or like. Yeah, it, it, even things like like um, um, our garbage people, they send us, because we're not city of Raleigh, so we have to like hire mm-hmm. the garbage mm-hmm. people. They send it to us quarterly. They send it a month out. I get that email, and then I like go into Gmail, and I'm like, remind me at this certain day, the day before it's due, mm-hmm. because I just can't have it sitting there. Because if I leave it unread, if I leave it read, I'll forget about it. Totally. If I leave it right. unread, then it's an unread email, but I like, I'm like, I'm not going to pay this a month from now. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. guys yeah. I'll yeah. pay it the day before it's due, which is what I always do. So, yes, I totally get it. Totally. So, uh, essentially, uh, none of us are awful. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all in agreement on that one. <laughs> um, okay. In the rain. Hood, hat, or umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, 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 or some combination. Umbrella if I have one on me. Yeah, I think it depends. Depends on what I'm doing. Depends on the type of rain. Cause I hate umbrellas. I really hate them. Like, I understand the necessity of them. But, like, they just, like, ugh. They're yeah, annoying. Kind of and then you lose, like, a hand. So now you only have one out. hand. They flip out. Yeah. They suck I... to spend money on. But, like, the cheap ones, like, break. Yeah. And, like, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. It's a racket. If I have a if I have a hood, I'll put the hood on. If I don't have a hood, I don't fucking care about getting wet. Truly, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I'll use. A hood I am a. Around. I'll run through the rain, whatever kind of person. Which yeah, I, it's not cold here, so yeah, <laughs> you can get rained on. And I mean, well, I got sick for a week, but hey, mate, that's <laughs> well, your body's bad. adjusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you prefer to Give work? Do you prefer to work out early, midday, or late? 
I prefer midday. However, I have found that I get the best results when I wake up early. However, mm. I hate waking up early with a passion of a thousand mm. suns. Yeah. Yeah, I aspire to work out early, but never ha- I'm still trying to still trying to roll my clock back to when I used to get up all the time and it's not working. Yeah. Um, but I generally work out midday. Yeah, I prefer I prefer midday, but I have found the best results are when I get up early. I had the best results when I was first started doing the E2, E2M thing, and I was getting up at 6, and um, really did found that that really worked well for me. But since we came back from California in July, I have not been able to get back into that 6 a.m. rhythm whatsoever, yeah, so whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've different phases of my life. Mm-hmm. I've done each each one. Too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think pre-pandemic, yeah. I really liked the post workout, post work workout, because then it was Quite. like you know you could just kind of leave, leave it all on the floor, and then mm-hmm. you go home and you shower and you're ready for bed. But like during the pandemic, I really liked the first thing in the morning workout. Mm-hmm. Lately, I've been kind of working. Then, well, not lately because I've been I haven't had time to exercise. But right. someday I will return to doing a little work, taking a break and exercise. So I think it just depends on the phase of life. Yeah. Agreed. I, I think like my ideal situation would, would still be to like work out in the morning, but to have a job that paid me for full-time work, but only required me to work four to six hours a week because I could be as productive as other people in that amount of time as they are at eight hours, just saying. And then I could work out in the morning, but wouldn't have to get up at six. It could be like more like an eight o'clock or nine o'clock workout. Ah, yes. That's like an ideal situation for me. If anyone has job ideas, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> or I just like, you know, now that I work from home, like when I'm not super busy, I do kind of like just shift my day. It's like I get up, nice. drop, do drop off breakfast. I'm sort of starting my work day while I'm mm-hmm. eating my breakfast. I like do a solid would you like a solid hour or so of work? I take a break to do like a half hour workout and oh, shower for the day. But then I also like I work through lunch or then I like uh-huh. I log back on to work like after, you know, the baby goes to bed. So like I'm getting my full like work day. It's just, you yeah. know, not consecutive hours. Yeah. 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 I like that too. But I still think that like I I could I would just be I think we would all be happier with four to six oh. hour work days. <laughs> oh a hundred a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah like, I agree. Yeah. From home. And probably just as productive, if not more. Oh, yeah. I'd be so much more productive. Yeah. Like it's yeah. 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 Um, okay, Rose says I could keep going, but I'm pretty sure this is plenty if you're interested to give <laughs> give you a try. I think we were. We just very much tried. Uh, we answered harder and smarter. Um, what else can you think of? I we can go blue if you're interested as well. I mean, send us what you got, Ro. This was yeah. fun. <laughs> into, yeah, it. I, I into, into it. Into it. All right, and we want to hear everyone else's too. Now that, <laughs> yes. now that some of you have answered. <laughs> yes, I, yep. open up the conversation. But open this, it up. We yeah. have spent enough time discussing it that there's no reason why nobody else should have their answers written down. So send it to us, the broadcasters, 3 gmail.com, 331 276 2373, or the post that you please that this is going into. <laughs> yes. All right, finishing up, we've got a match what she said, we've got an Andy update, and then we are going to bed. <laughs> Even right. I think we should do, switch it up tonight and do Matt's what she said in reverse. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So me, then Shandy, then Amanda. Oh, I okay. thought you were like starting at the bottom and then going. And then and now we're here. Yeah. So I was like, great. That means I'm still <laughs> in the same position. <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Well, let's do me, then Amanda, then Shandy. You're still in the same position then? Okay, wait. Me, Shandy, and then Amanda. Okay, me, Shandy, then Amanda. Yes. Is that also so we're completely... F- yeah. Yeah. St- yeah. Okay. But starting from the top and going down, not starting from the bottom and going up. Yes. For- no, yes. because then either way, I'm still in the middle. Like, we're completely redoing. No, but I mean from of the list of that the we're list. reading off of. Oh, we're reading it backwards. No, because that's what I understood. No, we're reading it forward. forward. <laughs> I understand now. We're reading it forward. I'm going to go. Then Shandy's going to go second. And then Amanda's going to go yes, we've, yes, we've established I'm now going to go last. Yes, got okay. it. Here. This is just for Great. tonight. That Just for tonight, we go back to just normal. Just try it out. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'll see how and tomorrow we go back to being friends. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Dave Matthews fan reference. Sure I was. salute you. Sure was. Yeah, thanks for picking that up. <laughs> Great song, by the way. Um, I missed the Dave Matthews reference until Shandy said it, and then I was like, wait a second, and then my brain quickly was like, oh yeah! <laughs> okay. We could have done it better, but at certain angles it looked right. <laughs> I could fill a whole bookcase with that. The amount of, uh, it's been a good, uh. (laughs) Janet was in it. Sabrina was there. Some other fun people. (laughs) I slid those right in there. I must have stared at that thing for 45 seconds. We're not doing the whole three minutes, but we're doing more than 30 seconds. (laughs) Is it just that for three minutes? (laughs) I do it both ways, and it depends upon the type of pants. We're going to do both? (laughs) I haven't worn pants since May or June. I turned mine off. Okay. I think we're done now. (laughs) (laughs) That was really good and very confusing. (laughs) Even though essentially we were all still following the same amount, it was just really weird. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, we're going back to zipping and buttoning if you're a button and zipper. Yeah. 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 That's right. I did. I I felt like we striked that reversed and I didn't like it. So. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we gave it a the old college try. We We did. We We always say try something new. Try something that makes you uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) And we did. Back to normal next week. All right, and then to wrap it up, we've got a This Work Week in Andy's Virginity. All right, Andy writes in, hey, broads. So I guess I should cut that track out of my special playlist, huh? My first time is still to be determined, but I think I can safely say I won't be setting the mood with that. Only thing less sexy than that would be Ben Shapiro reading WAP lyrics. (laughs) Always good when we can get a Ben Shapiro. Always good when you can get a Ben Shapiro. Always. Always here for the Ben Shapiro jokes. Yeah. Anyway, new guy extended his leave by a week, so supposedly he'll be back next Monday. While I know I should be more assertive and ask for a raise, it's not something I'm used to or comfortable with. We know I struggle with uh, self-advocation, and it doesn't help that I've tended to work at places that see me as expendable. However, in this case, I know you're right that they really need me and I can only imagine what things would look like if I weren't there. I guess it's a lot of the same stuff that was that has held me back in other areas. It is something I've been talking about with my therapist, too. I guess we'll see what happens when I get an update on my coworker. Until then, I guess we have to introduce the younger generation to Barry White. Hashtag I'm with hers, Andy. Um. I'm so glad you're talking about that with your therapist because that was literally, as I was reading it, that was going to be my suggestion. Mm-hmm. So, like, see, like, see if, like, maybe a therapist could help you, like, advocate for yourself a little bit more, like, work on being a little bit more assertive in those situations. So, that's awesome that you're already doing that. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But also, I just want you to know that your worth is not tied upon whatever the update is with your coworker. Totally. Yes. So, yeah. I honestly, I don't care what happens with him. You still deserve the race. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. All right. Well, Andy, thank you for that. And thank you for the imagery of me now in my head with um, uh, Ben Shapiro speak singing, uh, Let's Get It On, which oh, is, I know, not that I know that's uh, Marvin Gaye, but when Barry White, I just. Mandy, uh, that didn't work for me, and my brain just skipped ahead to that, so I know what I'm doing, and I'm not just confusing them. Okay, I'm going to cut all this out, but... That's what I I think of when I think of Barry White. I think of Alan McBeal. Oh, yeah. I've never seen an episode of Alan McBeal ever. Me neither. Oh, it's so good. I remember watching it like with my mom when it originally was like on TV. And it was like, I think it was on Netflix for a little bit. 
Oh, and then really? I think they lost the right. So it's like I was kind of watching through it because, uh, you know, it's like I don't think I had watched it sort of consecutively. It would just be like I would drop in like. But I did read that they're doing a reboot. I can't remember I what. I vaguely remember channels, seeing this too, yeah. Yeah, that it's like a young woman, another young woman that like comes to work at that law firm. So I don't know, like, I think it's still in development. So it's probably like unclear. Like, I vote on it being Florence Pugh. I think it's a woman of color. Color. I think oh. they already have like their main, it's the main actress. Better. I think that's the only thing they they released with was that like who the the main character was going to be. Even and better. Then it was like an Ally McBeal sort of reimagining reboot sort of thing. Ah, okay. Or I could like, be completely wrong on this. No, this I was vaguely like remember weeks, and weeks ago. So being aware that this was a thing, but because I never watched Ally McBeal, I didn't read anything about it. So cool. Well, thank you for that update, Andy. Um, Hopefully everything goes well next week. Thank you everybody for listening tonight. We appreciate it. If you have any stories about intuition and all that stuff, definitely let us know. We love that stuff. Give us, uh, if you have any emails about, uh, I don't know, cockroaches or snakes. No, don't send those to us. But if you have any emails about uh, the Shakespeare movies we're watching next week, Romeo and Juliet, the Leo Claire Danes version, O oh, with Mikhail Pfeiffer. Mikhail Pfeiffer? What's his name? Right? Mikhail Mackay Pfeiffer. Mackay Pfeiffer. I was right, like, I what's about, the Eminem like, song? Smile song. Yeah. Like, no, Mackay yes. Pfeiffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with Mackay Pfeiffer or um, Much Ado About Nothing, the Kenneth Brano version. Uh, please give us your feedback. We run on feedback and we love it. We'll be recording again Monday, October 3rd instead of the 4th. That's because Zachary has a baseball game um, on the 4th. So I wouldn't be able to start until later because apparently it's totally cool for 8-year-olds to play baseball at 8 o'clock at night, whatever. Too late. Too late. It's Too so late. late. But you know what? It's kind of cool with the lights and all that. But you can tell they're mm. tired because we've had two of those you know, late night games. And then they played one on Saturday at 12 o'clock and they were so much better on Saturday, like, <laughs> all of them. And I was just like, Jack was like, I think they're getting better. And I was like, no, I think they're just all well rested. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's also like, what if those kids have like younger siblings that have to be in bed? That means we like, do, we do. Yeah, Alex yeah. is exactly literally the, on Tuesday and Thursday last week, he begged to go to sleep. Like he fell asleep basically on the bleachers one oh, night. He was like, can I go to bed? And we're oh. like, as soon as we get home, buddy. <laughs> oh. So yeah, it is tough. He has a game tomorrow night, Wednesday, but um, I'm going to miss it because uh, Alex has gymnastics and Alex loves gymnastics so much that That's we can't, so I can't take that from him. So we're just yeah, going to divide and conquer. But anyway, yes, so uh, Shakespeare and then uh, hopefully the patron will join us live on X-Files Day 10-13. Halloween movies on ten eighteen, and then get your costume ready for Zoom on the 25th. October is just a wonderful month all around. I love it. I love the colors. I love the broadcast stuff. I just, I love October. October is the best month of the year other than February. So, yay. <laughs> 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 all right. On that note, though. Um, thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you to the patrons, especially the ones that contribute to a certain level and that we Eckhart Greener, Attack from Tokyo, Maggie the Magnificent, Joy with the Plan, and Ed the Creepy Mill Man. Thank you guys so much. If you have any feedback, as we've said, leave it on the Facebook post. You can email us, thebroadcasters3 at gmail.com or give us a call, 331-276-2373. I think that's about it. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye.